What's going on everybody? A little bit of a different type of video where I'm going to be looking for a lot of feedback in the comments. And what we're looking at is what makes an expert an expert. And this goes for either grading companies, um, certifying boxes as being authentic, the packs being authentic, and so on. We've had a lot of issues here recently in the hobby. A lot this year. A lot of this stuff all points back to BBCE was certifying the Pokemon, the 8687 Fleer box. Um, there's been talks about packs that have gone through, Frankenstein boxes, packs of Pokemon that were certified good originally that might not be good. All kinds of stuff out there. So we're going to play two video clips today. The first one's going to be uh, Steve Hart in an interview. It, it, I think this one here might be about two minutes long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut to that, come back, talk real quick about that. I'm going to play this, uh, another video. Both links to the full videos will be in the description. If you guys want to go check out the full videos and maybe you like their channel and, uh, you know, subscribe to it, that's on to you. Uh, the second video is going to be where they talk about uh, some vintage packs and open them. And it just brings some stuff into question, and it, it kind of like pulls the whole video together in a way. So, well, we'll play that video, I'll come back, and then I just got some questions to see what everybody thinks out there. Because we put a lot of money and trust into people, and from what I can understand is that, okay, the grading companies, they have a way to certify their graders. Some type of training. So I got that. There's something black and white in the manual. Well, at least in the three of the top, maybe four of the top grading companies out there. When we start talking about authenticating autographs, I mean, there's been some mishaps out there, some of the biggest known authenticators out there. Charles Lindenberg Auto, look at that one, and you'll be surprised who did it and how that all came about. Maybe we'll do that in a separate video. Waxbox authentication. I mean, what makes the person an expert into it? And do you expect them to have a 100% track record? Is 90% acceptable, you know, with it all? Because I could say now, because the way the product was made back then, you're not really able to go out there and uh, it wasn't sealed to have that 100% like guarantee kind of feel into it. And now with the Panini boxes, somebody has that shrink wrap. Kind of really starts going crazy again. All right, I'm going to cut to the first video, guys. Be right back. I've been sending packs to PSA. You've been looking at them. And I had some packs that uh, everybody who, who for 1989, you can see the sticker. And then you mm -hmm. can actually identify it and put it even in your PSA um, packet, if you will, or your, your right. letter. Um, three of the packs out of the four boxes I've sent in. Oh, you, 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 there was a pack without a sticker. Yes. Yes, I remember when you told me that on the phone the other day. Yeah. That happens. Not okay. often, kind of rare, but yes, it does happen. It's just a production issue. The and FLIR machine that jams the sticker in the pack just wasn't operating correctly. You know, uh, I believe on one of those finds of the 86 FLIR, I think the storage locker find, one of the seven boxes had a pack in it with no sticker. Now, the, the boxes were ironclad, untouched, and perfect. And here's an example of a pack, no sticker. So it's just a production issue. In fact, I've got a better story for you. One time I authenticated a box of 86 Fleur Bastula for a customer, and I'm doing the sticker coalition count. And I'm looking at the back of the pack, and I'm like, what is that? And I'm looking, and I'm looking a little bit harder. It's a Pittsburgh Pirates logo on the back of a pack of 86 Fleur Basketball. And then the pack below it had a Detroit Tigers logo on the back of the sticker all it was was maybe it was the same time they were making FLIR basketball as they were making the FLIR updates in baseball and if you remember the update sets had those stickers of the logos in there mm -hmm. maybe just FLIR printed the front of the sheet basketball cards and the back of the sheet the printing made the logos uh you know it's a very crude process anything could happen yeah no gum happen pack with no stickers happen packs like i just told you where the front of the card was a michael jordan sticker and the back of the park pack the back of the card was a cincinnati reds logo 
are those packs worth any more? Would they be, or would be like, no, 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 no. To some people, yes. Yeah. To, to me, I kind of think it's more of a uh, a mistake. Yeah. But to some people, it's unique. So it all your personal preference. Huh. But I, I've seen a lot of situations like that. Very rare, where you wouldn't believe it. But you know, I've seen it. All right, we're back. And again, there's nothing in front of me because I'm uh, sorry. I had this video started originally, and I kind of hit delete <laughs> as I was making it. But I've been doing a lot of PSA and SGC orders, so there's stuff all over the place here. I was trying to put some fancy stuff up, but just way too much stuff today. All right, so in this video, you can see Steve Hart uh, talks about, and it sounds, I was trying to find more in the story. Did he return the packs without stickers on the back? Maybe somebody knows. Maybe somebody watched the whole four-part series, so please let it down. It's, it's a, lot, a lot out there, a lot out there. But what I sat there and thought about, we start hearing the same terminology from him as we do currently. Like the pack without the sticker. It's a rare find. It's a unicorn. You know, the mythical beast lives. It's because the production, it skipped a sticker. You know, I can understand that. I really could. My question is, it skips a sticker. Pack still looks like it's good and sealed. Do we keep it in the box? Do you take it out? Do you make it a Frankenstein box? It makes you really start to wonder more. Um, even if you find a sealed case of this stuff, which it does exist. I can tell you that now. I know there has to be still tons of this stuff laying around as much as floating around back then. But, you know, when you pop that seal, because I believe back then it was like stapled or something on the top. I, have to, I think those were stapled. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think we stapled back then. We didn't tape. But, um, you know, where do you find what? Do you have look at labels and everything else? Some crazy stuff's got to go into this. I can tell you that. But we've been here before with the same exact things that's come out with the way, you know, it's explained to us. Rare finds, unicorn. A needle in a haystack and all that. What I thought was interesting was because, you know, he uses the word ironclad and stuff like that. Wasn't that Pokemon box kind of ironclad too out there? I mean, I'm just saying. Can't we all agree we got duped? I mean, technically, they all didn't get duped. You were the certifier. You got duped. They put their faith and trust into you. Uh, craziness, I'll tell you. It's the bas baseball stickers. Very, very rare, you know? How do you find a baseball sticker? What well, was all produced together, baseball and basketball? How do you know what's behind that baseball sticker isn't baseball cards then that were accidentally, if I, I wish I could show you my air quotes, were packed with that baseball card sticker and a FLIR basketball wrap pack? I don't know. I'm no expert on this stuff, <laughs> you know, but... You know, there's certain things I know to look for. I mean, how do you know stuff was not tampered with? I mean, again, even if it wasn't tampered with, how do we know there's not 87 FLIR baseball in there because, oh, they forgot to change out the machines? I don't know. You know, you can sit there and blame the uh, reper or the production stuff onto it and stuff. It just it doesn't add up to me. There's a lot of inconsistencies that I've seen with out oh, through time of what we're saying is genuine and real and everything else, there needs to be some way from the companies that made this stuff. And I know way back in the day, Opeachy Hockey kind of did some stuff with the Gretzky and stuff with letters that went out because they were still around. But there has to be somebody that bought these companies out that, you know, there's a, there, I don't want to say a manual, but something that shows, you know, how this stuff looked out there that can be produced to everybody to see. Not just one person's wisdom or, you know, there's three people grading wax. We got to trust these three. I mean, how do you put your trust into them? Because there's a lot of inconsistency out there. It just makes me wonder. All right, guys, I'm going to cut to the second part. Um, this guy here has, I think it's the same, actually the same people. But they go through with uh, some basketball packs that were pop, talk about, and stuff. And he mentions, you know, Frankenstein box was created. So very interesting. Be right back. Amongst the other packs that we're going to be opening is, we've got this Clear 1990 pack. 
So there's that, uh, which has a few interesting cards. The fun thing, I guess, is it's over 30 years old. And then we're going to go backwards to 1989. We actually have two of these packs. So there's one, and there's the other. There's that one again. And then this one's kind of fun. I got these back when I sent them off to PSA, and they were fun. Yeah, it's not fun that, quote-unquote, it was altered in that these packs. It says, no good because the back of the pack was popped. So it's in the bubble wrap. But when we get to opening it, we'll show you more detail. And then the last pack I have, and Kellen has the same exact ones except for our last pack. So the last one I have is this 1980, 81 Tops basketball, which all of you know is the rookie card for Bird Magic. This thing has really been hammered. It was uh, taken out of the box, one of the boxes that uh, I just got authenticated and re replaced with a PSA graded eight pack. But uh, opening up this one, I'm gonna guess the only thing in here is a piece of gum. <laughs> no, actually, there are some cards. And then Kellen has something that's what we've been waiting. For. Yeah, finally we have. What would you say this is? Uh, this is a pack that somebody messed with, but it is uh, the most sought-after basketball cards in the business because it's the Jordan rookie card along with a bunch of other, I don't know, probably dozens of other rookie mm -hmm. cards. And uh, you said it was tampered with, unless you show a little. Quick before and after what this might have looked like. As you can see uh, on this card on the left hand side here, uh, you can clearly see there is a disconnect between the two papers and the wrapping and the adhesive. Where on the right hand side, there's all seamless, which is not a good sign because that means someone has used something like an iron or something else that is hot to reseal the pack, which is why it's been tampered with, uh, which is not kosher. Uh, but we have it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and so that was one of the packs that was replaced. The good thing about this pack, um, although I'm doubting there's anything beyond the sticker, uh, the sticker is a Kareem Abdul Jabbar pack. Wow. Or a card, excuse me, so it should be worth a little bit of money. All right, so let's begin. The problem with this pack, according to PSA, was that it was altered. No good popped. Now, Steve Hart, you remember those videos that we did with him? Uh, yes. BBC? That's his writing. Oh, really? That's, that's him, literally. That, that's his hint. And what he wrote here is no good popped, which means that... The Someone popped the seal? Well, it came like that. It was already... See? Oh, there's just no adhesive. Yeah, there. so it's, when he sees that, he says, Matt, no good. I'm not even going to look at it. Right. So I doubt this pack was tampered with, but I couldn't get it graded. So you've got the same issue with yours, so we'll look at it in just a minute. But okay. here we go. So we're coming to our final uh, FLIR pack. This is, again, what we talked about earlier, which was ironed down so this has been clearly tampered with but yeah. we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that whoever opened this before missed out on some of the good ones they didn't yeah other than the cream card it was a mistake that they didn't replace that well they could have been just real big dummies so who knows what else yeah in here. i hope so um I'm be very gentle with this and maybe they were only looking for jordan but if this cream card is well centered it's yeah be careful of that one because that one is worth a fortune so we'll look at the cream card right out of the chute Oh yeah, now if this card has, this card's worth something, there's no doubt. That card, and I have eights in this, is an eight. This card is worth a lot. I might be able to get a nine out of this. Centering top to bottom, pretty perfect. Left to right, 40, 60 probably. If that's a nine, this will be worth over a thousand bucks. Wow. And did you have anything to say about our friend Calvin that we had previously brought up? Other than that, uh, no, but, but the center's pretty good. It's pretty perfect left to right, so we'll hope for good things in the rest of this pack and get you know some medium stars. Remember when we were looking at the grading? This would probably get a nine. So all of these cards, if they're centered like this, we want to set them aside because they're worth 100 bucks a piece. Wow. So be careful. Let's be careful with these. Yeah. I'll put them back over here. It's really interesting because um, this pack, even in, in, if it, they're all well-centered and they're all nine-ish, this pack's going to be worth... Including that Jabbar, two grand. Whoa. Yeah. And this is pretty centered too, so it looks like we're off to a good start with all the centering. Yeah, you know what's weird about that though? Would you bring that Calvin mat back in here? It looks like it's, oh no, it, it's just right. Okay, it looked like, wow, that is really good. A little bit off left to right, but top to bottom, top to bottom pretty good. It's going to get you, because the corners are crystal clear and fresh out of pack, that's going to be an eight or a nine. Wow. These will be worth getting graded, all of these. And this is Charles, o Char Charles, Charles Oakley. His rookie card. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. We. So this is where we're going to see something. Oh, Akeem unbelievable! Olajuwon. We got Akeem out of this. Wow. Ooh, oh. look at that. A little off top to bottom, a little off left to right. It's going to get you an eight. It might get you a nine. An uh, eight, I believe, is going to get you close to 300 bucks. Wow. So this is interesting. Somebody pilfered this pack, left Kareem behind, and left Elijah one behind. Who knows? I mean, we don't know who opened it. It could have been a little kid. That's and a really good their, point. Their parents stopped them halfway through. That that you're it's very so conscientious, funny. kind human being to say that. <laughs> well, I mean, either that or this person who opened it before is just an idiot. Yeah. Brady, Robert Parrish. Yep, got a little bit of hair there. Yeah, move that off. Yeah, that's good okay. too. Now well, that's the thing about these packs that people didn't understand back then. If you're going to pill for one. You know, you might as well have kept this whole pack because it's all well centered. Uh, Jim Paxson. Yeah. Nothing too special here. No, no, but I'm happy with all the centering. It's really good. Eric Floyd. Remember Sleepy? Yes, same guy as before we talked about him earlier. Uh, well centered, but it's got that, that issue. That little dot there. Yeah. I'm not sure what you even call that, like a film burn or something. Oh, I like that. That's a good way to put it. I, yeah. Well, that's what it looks like on, on film. You have those little film blocks. Those are burn marks. But this is clearly a print, so I'm not sure what it is. It just kind of looks like that. Print burn. Yeah. I don't use that, but look at how well centered this is, right? Yeah. Is this? Is there anything wrong with the centering at all? Uh, it looks pretty much right on the money to me. Yeah, there's a little corner issue here. You did that. I saw it. Okay. <laughs> Wow, and the nice thing about these cars is they're so incredibly white. Huh, it's kind of fun opening. Yeah, we have World Be Free as our final card for this uh, yeah. session. Ooh. All right, my first thought is when I always do these is the Frankenstein boxes. They're always worded differently on these official letters from the company, of, well, at least the BBC. Why can we not? I know you only use the word Frankenstein box. Why can't you just put that these this box is not a genuine box? It's just like thirty six packs that were put together in a box. I don't care if you replaced one pack or twenty packs. It's still not the original box. And I've got you can find a box out there, and you don't know. You know, back in the day, the dealers would just restock that first box. I, I think that the only way you should certify that as a true box is if you found it from a true case that's still sealed, I believe stapled. Those were stapled, if I recall right. Um, shut. But the, the master case, whatever you want to call it, was stapled instead of taped. I think that's the only way you should do it. The rest of these should just be called a 36-count pack or 36-pack box and explain this is not confirmed to be an original full box out of a case. It's the easiest way to say it. it takes a lot out. My thoughts on to it. I don't know what your thoughts are out there. Again, how many of us are really going to go out and buy an A6, A6, or A6, A7 Flare box? Not many. So, with this video, I know it was kind of a little bit around and stuff like that there. I kind of threw my notes away from when I first did it because I had it all set and I was splicing stuff together to make it look a lot more fancier. But... This is why I want to know what you guys think. What makes an expert an expert? Whether you're looking at grading companies, sealed wax that they're certifying, autograph authentication, there's really no, besides having something with the grading companies that deem as a training certificate, I don't think there's much you could go out there for to learn to, you know, certify autographs. I could be wrong. I, I, Maybe there is a degree or something out there. I mean, all you can do is look at what's known to be true off of an official document and try to look at where the pen placement is, where the lines are heavier, etc., stuff like that. But, I mean, what makes the expert an expert? Where's the schooling from? We put our trust and faith and hard-earned money into this stuff, and we should get excellence back. So, like I said, we pay for expertise, or do you think we're actually paying for somebody's opinion out there? And then how much do we value that opinion? Because once they're wrong, does that decrease value in all their stuff they've done out there? Is it a one and done, hey, we'll forgive and we'll move on, and it happens two, three, four, five times? 
I mean, is there a certain percentage overall that we look at? Like, this guy has graded X amount of wax boxes, this amount of wax packs, this is his error ratio. I mean, where, where do we go on this stuff? And the other thing I want to know is, do you guys think, because my opinion is yes onto this, does it seem like experts change their thoughts on what the what a genuine product is after something bad comes about of it? You know, it, it kind of the questions do link all together, but I'm kind of curious in everybody else's opinion because there's been some talk, um, and I've noticed with uh, some discussions I've been in, everybody has a different opinion on to it, which, you know, when you have a, about 10 to 15 people with different opinions, some might, you might have like two or three agree here, two or three agree here. If that's the way that, you know, a group's thinking, I'm just curious, the bigger picture is, you know, you have three different companies out there, say, certifying wax or autographs. If each of them have a different way of thinking, what's truly the right way? It, it, it really makes me wonder. It really does. All right, guys, like I said, different video. Sorry I had to remake this. Um, I wanted to get this out uh, here for this week. I know I wanted to get it out this weekend, but... I did a boo-boo, closed out of the uh, uh, Filmora by mistake, and I know I clicked don't save changes because I had a mess of different things open that day. And then I wanted to get all these guys' this PSA and then an SGC order out for myself. Vintage only SGC, just so you guys. I know somebody's going to ask. It's vintage only, four cards. Uh, they're all close to PSA price anyhow. And I'll just get them back quicker. But I wanted to get this out to see some thoughts and opinions on this stuff. All right, guys, appreciate you watching, supporting the channel, giving the thumbs up, subscribing and all that, and I'll catch you next video.